Next question is from Marissa Lane. How do I fix duck, duck feet? I not only have external rotation when I squat, but while I am walking as well. Is mobility work enough to get to the point where I'm walking naturally with my feet straight? Yes, uh, mobility work can make a huge... Can we huge... also fix duck lips? <laughs> yeah, that's a big help. problem. I'm pro duck they're, lips. They're... So, <laughs> thanks, Adam. Um, so, so obviously, like it sounds, someone's feet turn out. Now, I've worked with uh, a few people where this is a big problem. All of them were dancers. All of them had a background in ballet or dance, which actually emphasizes that external rotation. Mm -hmm. The other people that I've worked with that have this, this type of a problem... Didn't have it as severely, but it came from having collapsed arches, flat feet, just poor ankle mobility. So if your ankle doesn't have good mobility, your feet will naturally want to turn out to make up for uh, this problem. So this is typically an issue that either starts at the hip, where your hip doesn't internally rotate very strongly, or more often than not, unless you're that dancer, um, it comes from weak feet mm -hmm. and ankle mobility. If your feet are weak, and they don't have the strength because if you look at if you if you were to Google right now, foot anatomy or foot muscular anatomy, you would be very surprised to see that there are lots and lots of muscles in the foot. The foot is not just a a, a rigid extension of your leg that you just like a, it's not like you're standing on a stilt or something like that. Yeah. It is very it, it's supposed to be very active. And if those muscles aren't doing what they're supposed to do, it's going to throw you off. And a good way to, to to look at this is like the wear and tear, and see where you're really callousing and where you're you're putting most of your weight, uh, you know, on your feet. Uh, and, and that's one thing that I, I know, like Dr. Brink helped to kind of highlight that triangle of of pressure that you want really want to see if you can maintain and and, and train your body to uh, uh, stabilize uh, in that direction a little bit more. And that's that's you know typically where your the tongue of your shoe. Uh, and then your big toe, and then and then and then your your pinky toe, and kind of dispersing that force between all all three of those points. So this is exactly. I'll tell you what I would do with a client uh, every time before we work out. This is what it would look like. I would do uh, ninety ninety work for the hips. I would do combat stretch for the ankles. Then I would take you barefoot, squeeze a basketball, and really concentrate on your feet the way it's, they're planted on the floor, like Justin's saying that triangle. And, and squeezing the basketball and doing deep, as deep as squats as you can, holding it, squeezing the basketball between your knees while you while you work on just the mechanics. Between that priming, so if you do those two for the priming movements, and then go in and you do that for your your strength training is work on that. And that is what I, I would have my client do that all the time until we start to work. That's a great them. combination. So, and, and short foot is another exercise. If you're having trouble activating your feet, mm -hmm. there's a movement called short foot. And essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to squeeze the muscles in your arch. It's almost like you're trying to create a stronger arch in your foot. Um, that'll help you connect to that position. Then when you do that last exercise Adam talked about where you have the basketball between your legs, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to activate your feet, then do your squats. That's a great combination.